What's up everyone? Today we're going to be looking at Elder Scrolls Online on the Steam Deck using the non-Steam Bethesda Launcher version. I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up from start to finish and some tips and tricks after the install. So let's get into it. You can do this natively using just Proton and I'll just go ahead and show you this. So first you're going to need to go to your ElderScrollsOnline.com account and log in. Uh, once we're in our account, we're going to go download game. And then once this finishes downloading, we'll go ahead and continue on. All right. So once you have that, it's going to be, it should be in your downloads folder called install ESO.exe. And then you're just going to need to open up steam and go to uh, the top where it says games and then go to add a non steam game to my library and we're going to click on browse and we're just going to go to that downloads folder double click on install ESO and go ahead and say add selected programs and then once that's in I gotta see if I can even find it there it is before we click play on this we're gonna need to right click and go to properties and then compatibility and then you need to check force the use of a specific steam play compatibility tool and i would just change this to whatever proton stable is the latest below experimental and if that doesn't work for some reason i would just go to the next one below that or check protondb.com for whatever update you need to use that's all you need to do here and we'll just close that and now we're ready to click play on this and this is going to launch the browser installer basically and it's important to launch this in desktop mode otherwise sometimes it's hard to click this uh, ok button now i've lost the use of my mouse here but i can hold steam and then the steam button and then i can use it so I'll click ok on that box there All right, now uh, I gotta use the Steam or just tap, I could say continue. I have read, and agree, continue. So once you get through that okay menu, then you're gonna have this prompt here. And first it's gonna have an install location. Now this path is perfectly fine. This program files in Emacs online. Just remember that you will need this in a, in a later step and we'll show you how to do that here in just a little bit. But if you were going to add say, uh, or install it instead to a micro SD card, then you would wanna change it. Um, everything else you want to keep this same selection you want to keep DirectX on and Visual C++ 2019 you want that to be installed as well. So really you can just tap install if you're going to install it to your solid state hard drive internal on the uh, Steam Deck itself. Otherwise for the micro SD um, we'll go ahead and test it out here. I'm going to go I've already got my micro SD card and it's already been formatted for Steam Deck but it is freshly formatted and again I'm having to hold down Steam and, and then use the trackpad, otherwise I can't click in. But here I'm gonna go down to my computer and then this D drive here. And then inside this D drive, uh, this should be your micro SD. So I'm gonna say make new folder and we'll just call this ESO. Okay. And then we'll just say okay to that. And they got 98 gig required. So this is a very hefty download. So if you didn't know that uh, going in, you might consider putting it on a micro SD. All right, let's go ahead and install it. And now it's just gonna go through its normal installation process. This is going to take a very long time, um, even on a good internet connection. I mean, 90 gig is not small. And you'll see that it did kind of just make a little change there. Just expect that to happen. Once that's done, you do have to then click install or tap install here. 
to continue and actually install it to the micro SD or, uh, or to your internal memory on the Steam Deck. All right, so eventually you'll finish installing it and it will have a play option here. Don't click play here yet. We're gonna actually have to close this out. And then what we need to do here is we need to add the actual Bethesda launcher. So we go to add a new non-Steam game and then browse and in this case we're gonna go to our home directory and if you don't see these folders here then click on this settings and make sure that show hidden files is checked and we're gonna wanna go into the dot steam folder here and then inside here we go to the steam folder and in here we're gonna go down to steam apps and then compat data if you don't have it like this view and it's actually like this, so you just click on uh, this one here and then sort by date. So you get the most recent folder. If we go into that and into the PFX folder here, drive C, program files, there's the Zinimax online folder inside this. So here the launcher folder and then the Bethesda net launcher. This is the one we need. We want to click open on that and with that selected we want to say add selected programs one other very important tip or very important thing that you need to know for this is that you never want to delete the install eso shortcut even though we're going to use the bethesda launcher as a separate shortcut you're going to want to use that bethesda launcher when you launch the game but you need this because the installer is actually writing to this app id in the folders okay after we add it let's go back up here to bethesda net launcher and we're going to right click on that go to properties and we're going to do the same thing we did and the other the install ESO and change it from Proton Experimental to 9.0 or whatever is the most latest stable version if that works make sure you have this set to forced okay with that we can close that out and in this case what we're also going to do is go into the properties and rename this and there's a reason why we're going to rename this but it needs to be exactly the Elder Scrolls online with the proper punctuation. So I'll just type that in now. Okay, so that's how it should be typed out. The Elder Scrolls Online with spaces and the proper punctuation. And I'll tell you why here in just a, just a moment. Once we get into gaming mode here, we'll reveal that. But if we go close this out, close this out, we can now return to gaming mode. All right, now we're here in gaming mode. So what we need to do is just go launch the game. So Steam, library, non-Steam. Here's the Elder Scrolls Online, tab A. And before we launch this, um, you might want a different controller option. If we hit here, um, see, I do have a community layout right now on mine. Um, if I go to here and go to community layouts, you'll see that even on a non-Steam game, I have the community layouts. This is why we renamed the title of the game. It has to match the Steam store name exactly, and if it does, this will work on any non-Steam game as long as it's in the Steam store. So as long as you have it in the correct spelling exactly like the store. So with this, you'll be able to add the community layouts. So we'll just go ahead and move on here and we'll go to play. So here we have booted it up, booted it up. Sometimes it's, I have to either tap or just hold steam and then click.
So the first time you boot up the game, it's going to ask if you want accessibility mode on or off. And you might already know about this, but um, essentially it's going to force you into the gamepad UI and limit a lot of stuff. So uh, in my case, I don't want to enable accessibility mode, but we do want to enable the controller. So for now, I'll go ahead, continue accessibility mode disabled. Okay. And then I got to adjust the brightness. It should be a little brighter. Okay server select all the normal setup stuff here so i'm just going to fast forward through this okay now before i log in there is one thing to note on this and that is i'm going to zoom in here if you'll look at the fps counter you'll see we're just idling here but every few five to ten seconds you're gonna see a blip like that and you're even gonna see everything freeze and so the fix for this is to actually just go and press the steam button and there's a Zinimax on like the launcher itself and that's staying be hidden behind this window that's what's causing it to lock up so we just press X to close the window and we give it a second here there it goes and we go into resume game and now you'll see that there are no more spikes so that's a big tip because otherwise you're gonna really hate this game you really need that fix <laughs> uh, otherwise it's gonna stutter like every five to ten seconds all right so now I'll just go ahead and log in with my account okay so now uh, I've got it logged in now I had to use the Steam and the trackpad at the same time to click on things. And then sometimes the Steam keyboard didn't want to come up uh, when I was putting in my password, but it was fine for the username. So what I had to do was just press the Steam button and bring up this, and then I was able to bring up the Steam uh, keyboard again. So you might have to just do that Steam button and then Steam keyboard to get that to work. So hopefully I put in the password correctly the first time. Let's see if I get in. There we go. Now it's gonna start this whole thing. We're gonna skip the cutscene there. All right, so now we're booted in. We'll go ahead and select country. And this text is incredibly small. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to read it this far away. When I'm playing it and I'm a little closer, it's a different story. All right, so uh, the setting for controller isn't until we actually get into the game. Again, uh, you, you know, you can create character here and go through the whole thing. Uh, and you could just type in your name here as well. So you don't necessarily need a keyboard. It's just a little handier to get around and get this set up. All right, so now I'll just go ahead and log in. And just to let you know, the load times on this are, are just a little longer, especially at the, the beginning when it was building the shader cache the first time. So it's a little faster to get into the game the second time around. All right, so an issue that you're going to have when you boot up for the first time after getting through all the menus and creating your character or choosing your character is that maybe your trackpads will work, but nothing else is really gonna work. So we need to just turn on gamepad mode. And how you do that is you need to press escape. And with the Steam Deck hotkey, it is Steam and then left arrow and that's gonna bring up your menu here and again I'll need to hold down Steam as I'm clicking here so we're gonna go into settings and then gameplay and then if you scroll down you have gamepad mode this is gonna be turned off on any new installs so we just flip that on and now I've got full controller support um, with Steam input and I'm just using these this custom community template. This game seems to run pretty well uh, if you just set it to like 45 FPS. This is the Steam Deck OLED and I'm on charged right now but unplug here. You know it's it's really not you could run it high no problem and then I can just show you real quick the settings I have and go to options and video. So we've got Graphics are on high, texture is high, FSR is off. Definitely turn FSR off because this game doesn't seem to allow you to downsize the resolution in your windowed mode. So you can't actually turn F FSR on 
So when you do, it just results in a blurrier image. So you can leave that off and you can leave this on full screen, windowed, or just plain full screen. Either one is fine. So now that you have this all set up, the last thing maybe is to just add the artwork to make it look like the Steam version. An easy way to do this instead of having to go the manual route is use the Discover Store and look for Boop. So Boop, B-O-O-P. And it's this first one here, SGD Boop. So this will download Steam Grid database assets to your Steam installation. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. And it says it's meant to be ran from a browser. So what we need to do is just, we can just open up the uh, Firefox. I don't believe it works in Edge. So we're just gonna go to steamgriddb.com slash boop to continue the setup. So I'll go ahead and open up Firefox. Hopefully I got that in right. Okay. So now we're gonna come down here because we already did the installation to show a test pop-up. And we want to always allow open link there we go. Now we got the notification that it is working. So I'll say okay here. Now we want to flip this giant switch to see the boot buttons. So now we should just be able to hop on back to search. And we're going to look up for Elder Scrolls. Okay. There's Elder Scrolls Online. Come in here to grids and then choose one. In my case, I'm going to choose this and it's going to ask me which game I want. Thankfully it already found it automatically. Otherwise you can scroll through there and then we can go to logos. There's even live logos that you can import as well. So I think I'll just go with this one here. Say okay. Under icons, choose an icon. Okay. Heroes. So this is gonna be the background. I think this is the one to make it match, at least. So now, I'll need to exit Steam and then relaunch it. So now I come in here and here's the Steam version. And here's the version that I installed. So it's a quick, easy way to get custom artwork in. That's gonna do it for the setup of Elder Scrolls. There's probably a lot of other graphical settings you could play with, but otherwise I feel like a stable 45 frames a second, around 10 to 15 watts is pretty awesome. If this helps you set it up, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, etc. And I'll see you next time.